And welcome to another edition of The Locker Room, where the BS stops and the analysis starts. And tonight, special edition with your hosts, Kyle Anderson. It's Brandon Jones, live in The Locker Room. And The Locker Room is brought to you by Rammer Jammer Beer. Go to Rammer Jammer Beer Co., find out where it's being sold, where you can buy items, and more importantly, how good it tastes. Oh, yeah. Now, don't forget, tonight, this is a special edition. We're going to be discussing one of the biggest rivalries in college football, one of the biggest rivalries in the SWAC, and probably one of the biggest rivalries in the Southeastern Division. We're talking about Southern and Jackson State, the Tigers versus the Jaguars. And we have none other than All-American and future Hall of Fame inductee, yes, our very own Brandon Jones, who played at Southern, He's going to give us insight about the whole rivalry, but more importantly, he's going to give us insight on why is this rivalry one of the best in not only Division One AA or FCS, but why it's one of the biggest rivalries that you need to know about. Brandon, this is huge. You and I have <laughs> talked about this. You said this. This is the biggest week. Now, we've talked about Alabama, A&M, and Alabama State. We've talked about the Magic City Classic, Labor Day Classic, Turkey Day Classic. What is Southern and Jackson State? Why is it so big? It's 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 two powerful programs. Uh, Grambling is the Notre Dame of HBCU football, and right there w- along with them, you have Southern and Jackson State, and the schools are only separated, you know, by you know two hours, hour and a half, two hours, and in the SWAC we have the two biggest fan bases. Uh, usually in the SWAC, either Southern or Jackson State will lead the SWAC in attendance. Um, and you ask someone, who's the, who has the best bands in the SWAC? People want to say either Southern or Jackson State. Um, who has the best football tradition? Is Southern or Jackson State? Uh, is it Walter Payton in, in the JSU Tigers? Or is it Aeneas Williams and, you know, the Southern Jaguars, you know? And it's, it's you know, is it Mel Blunt, you know? Those guys who came through and made the made the rivalry, and it's it's a nasty rivalry. There's no love lost between uh, you know Southern and, and Jackson State. And when you arrive on the campus at one of those schools, you learn early that this game is big, and this is a game that makes or breaks your season. You can have a successful season and win the title, but if you lost that game. That school is going to have bragging rights, you know, over you, and they're going to let you know it. Now, when you look at the SWAC, like you said, a lot of traditional top name teams. You say it; everybody knows who it is: Grambling, Alcorn State. Now, all of a sudden, you've got Jackson State and Southern. Like you said, two of the biggest fan bases, two of the best bands, and more importantly, two with the most richest tradition. Mm-hmm. What is it about when these two teams meet that it's not your typical rivalry? Like, it gets down to the point where these two squads just don't like each other. I mean, they would rather, basically, they'd rather go on walking by than even have anything to do with each other. I mean, it's, it's definitely, I, I remember going to um, a SWAT championship game, uh, Southern and Jackson State. The first SWAT championship game in Birmingham in 1999. Uh, and that was the first game that, and I had gone to uh, first Southern and Jackson State game. I had gone to. I was in you know tenth grade at the time, and I saw how big that rivalry was. Where those schools are, you know, Jackson State's three and a half hours, you know, from from Birmingham. Southern's five hours, but even the upper deck was full at at you know at Legion Field, and just to know what that game means, that mean that that game means everything. Because Jackson State recruits kids out of New Orleans. Southern gets kids out of South Mississippi. Um, you know, Southern and Jackson State grow up, grow up around each other. But it's, it's just that, that hate, that hate. You know, I watched so I watched uh, Jackson State and Grambling play in the SWAT title game a few years back, and I became violently ill to my stomach. I was like, is there a way that both of them can lose? It's, it, it's, it's just a hate, and it's been going back. You know, since way back when. And it's funny you bring that up because for a lot of people, the fans of, J- of Jackson State and Southern are going to know this. But for a lot of the people who may not, the first time the two schools met, it's amazing. They met in 1929. 
Southern, now I want you to listen very closely. Southern beat Jackson State 98 to nothing. The next time they played each other was until 1958, and that's because they became, Jackson State became members of the SWAC. Yeah. It, it's funny because you and I were talking off mic about, you, you talk about a lot of the big rivalries. People talk about, oh, you know, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Florida State, Georgia, Georgia Tech, where people just, they don't like each other, they hate each other. But on this one, I think it's even more intense because you were explaining it goes beyond football. Yes. It's the fan bases. It's the bands. It's even the cookouts. It's the tailgating. Yeah. When did it all start? I mean, was it there long before you got there or was it? it was, it's was. it been there long before I got there. This is going all the way back, you know, back in the days where, you know, Mel Blunt and, you know, Walter Payton, when they were at, you know, the respective schools, Southern has the Jaguar Nation. All right, and Jackson State has, uh, you know, the Big Blue. is what they call them, the, the, uh, you know, the Big Blue Bengals. And when you play in the SWAC, when Southern or Jackson State or Grambling, we call those the Big Three, when they come to your campus, that's usually your biggest on-campus game of the year because Southern, we will travel, uh, you know, around the uh, you know, Southwestern Athletic Conference with eight to 10,000 people, the Jaguar Nation. They're coming with the RVs. You're going to know we're there. So we would offset people's home field advantage, Southern and Jackson State mainly, because the fan bases are so big. And when you have a fan base that rivals yours and everything you do is so competitive, it's us and it's us and you guys, it's been like that since back in the day. And it's it, it has – it had gotten so big that for a long time we didn't play Jackson State in Baton Rouge because the stadium wasn't, wasn't big enough. You know, we would play them in Jackson because the stadium, the stadium, you know, seat 60,000. But we would, when it was our home game, we would either play them in New Orleans or in Shreveport, and it would still sell out no matter where we were. So that, that hate, it goes back way back when. It even stretch, stretches to the, you know, to the bands. Our bands don't like each other at all. Under no circumstances, they don't shake hands at the game. They go and they go at each other's throat an hour before the game and then an hour after the game. And during the game, they're firing back and forth uh, at each other. They hate each other. Now, one thing that we talked about off mic that I thought was really important, you were saying that didn't play in Baton Rouge because the stadium wasn't going to have enough capacity. Now it does. Mm -hmm. It's up to 44,000. Jackson State has 60,000. But the one thing that you told me that I thought was so amazing, this rivalry has moved around to a lot of places, but every place it's gone, sold out. So Never an empty seat. No. What is it about the rivalry? Is it just between the two families, or is it everybody in the SWAC stops and watches this game? There will be people at the Southern Jackson State game this weekend that didn't have a tie to either, either school that went to – you know, Alabama A&M or Alabama State or Tuskegee or Hampton or Howard. It's just that because the, that hate, the games are usually very competitive. Very rarely will you run into a Southern Jackson State game where it was, it was decided by more than a touchdown. The games are intense. There have been some classic games. I've been a part of a, a triple overtime, uh, you know, game and, you know, some, some other ones. It's a competitive game. It's a hard-hitting, hard-fought game. And then as far as the bands, the band heads, as we call them, call it, it's the battle of the battles. To see the human jukebox and the sonic boom of the South go back and forth. I mean, you have people who have no interest in the football game that will sh- to show up just to watch the bands go at it. And you will see cameras pointed at e- e- at both bands, you know, throughout the, uh, the ball game. And it's the parking lot, the tailgating. We always claim that we have the number one, you know, uh, tailgate fans. They say they have the number one tailgate. Matter of fact, for this game, tailgate started today. Today is Tuesday. RVs start pulling up in Baton Rouge today. And, and by Thursday, there probably won't be any more tailgate spots. That's what it's about. Now, we talked before about Alabama State, Alabama and m Magic City Classic. And like you said, that's more along the lines of it's a big pageantry. It, it's intense it's between two schools, but not nearly on the level that you see with Jackson State and you see with Southern. Now that the fact that, okay, here we are, it's game week, 
Bands have already started. Tailgating's already started. The teams are ready to hit the field. Being a player, what is it like when you walk out, just to even go stretch, what is it like when your foot hits that turf and you hear the crowd? When you go to stretch in that game, and you, me and you, we watched the film. Uh, me and Kyle actually watched the film uh, uh, some years I was at Southern. When you go to stretch, there's usually already about 40,000 people in the stands, and both bands are in the stands, and they're going at it. So this is a stretch session that's live. You're amped up. You're ready to go. You hear half the stadium booing, half the stadium cheering. Even in stretch session, you have to hold on to those emotions. You have to hold on to that power because you just want to explode. You got to realize we're still an hour away from kickoff. You have to remain focused. And that whole week is about focus. Focusing in on what you have to do. Your job. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't don't let your emotions flow all over the pay all over the place. Stay focused on what you have to do, and that was my always my message uh, to the defensive backs and the linebackers when I was a captain of that defense. Stay focused on what you have to do. Don't get it. Don't get caught up in the hype because it'll it'll happen to you. It's a game where emotions run high, but you have to control those emotions. Now, you were telling me a story about when you were in Jackson. Southern was going to play Jackson State, mm -hmm. and big weekend. It was when the exact year, I'm going to let you explain it, because you were telling me everything down to the T, even to the point where you guys had to actually change hotel rooms in the middle of the night, no. which is very unheard of in college football because usually you don't do that unless it's a big major issue. What happened, and that was the week of Jackson State? And Southern. Well, 2006 was my senior year. We uh, go to play Jackson State. And uh, at that time, uh, we came in with one loss. They came in undefeated, um, which Jackson State had just bounced back from a hard time. Uh, they went the, the year before. They only had one conference win. And they had, you know, had racked up three straight losing seasons, which is odd for Jackson State. And that year, they were back. They had just hired Rick Comagy. So the big blue, big blue nation, they were back. Uh, when we got on the bus leaving Baton Rouge, once we hit Jackson, you know, city limits, the the cars come by, you know, throwing you that, that one finger peace sign. Uh, there were literally people on bridges and overpasses, you know, mooning the, the buses as you get in the state trooper escort. Uh, their student body made it their business to show up at Veterans Memorial Stadium at around 2.30 so that when we get off the bus, they could boo the hell out of us. All right. Uh, we, we arrive at the hotel and some Jackson State fans, a few hundred fans lined up outside the hotel. And they did the FUSU chant. And it carried on and carried on. And they, you know, called the police and some things of that. It got to the point where we had to change hotels. All right. We had to change hotels around 8 o'clock, 8 or 9 o'clock that night. And that day, I remember going into the meeting rooms during breakfast and telling the guys, I've never been this disrespected. You know, you should want to go out and, and pound these guys. All right, th this is disrespect. And at that, at that time, we had a 3-0 and record uh, while I was a starter at Southern against Jackson State. And that game ended up turning into a, a triple overtime loss for us. A uh, game we lost a triple overtime, my only loss at Jackson State. But that was... That game stands out to me the most because if we win that game, we come to Birmingham to play the SWAT championship game against Alabama a and Now, in the series, it is almost dead even. Southern does have a one-game lead, 29-28. to Looking over the history of the game, as you said, very close games, very intense. But the one thing you were saying that I thought was interesting, how... How hard is it when you're, like you said, you have to hold on to those emotions. Well, how hard is it or what is it like to go through where you went through that whole week of dealing with that? You get on the field, you do everything, and you lose. I mean, what was that like walking off the field and knowing that they now they're not going to stop, they're going to get even worse, and you had to listen to it even all the way probably back to Baton Rouge? And I know you probably still hear it every day now, every time you run into somebody that's a Jackson State fan. I hear it the most because, um, me, you kind of talked about this, and this, this was the stat. My record against Jackson State was 3-1, and one, all right, 3-1. and one. 
But that one loss is the one that hurts the the most. In uh, four games, what was it, 32 tackles? Uh, I had 32 tackles, four game total, 30, 32 tackles, three interceptions, one interception, uh, 52 yard return for a touchdown, uh, two block punts, and two sacks. That's my four game total. So usually Jackson State was one of my better games. That 06 loss, losing it, when he kicked that field goal, that, that, that last overtime, and it went through, I remember just turning around and kind of looking at look at the ball go through, and I fell to my knees, and I just laid flat down. And you couldn't hear anything. The crowd erupted. Um, and, man, I'm not going to lie to you. The tears start rolling. Um, and that was the the – that was the most painful, hurting feeling that I ever felt. And our locker room was so quiet that you hear a pin drop. I mean, you heard guys sniffling. Everyone cried. I mean, I cried all the way back to Baton Rouge. I know the defensive bus and the offense guys were the same way. We cried all the way back to Baton Rouge. And it was the most somberest mood because that was your last shot. There's nothing you can do at this point. They got you, and they got you a hurt. They cost me a sweat championship game. So, you know, Jermaine and the, those other guys, those Jackson State guys, I got, you know, good friends playing at Jackson State. They remind you of that. I cost you a swag title. You might have gotten the best of me and went 3-1, and one, but I cost you a swag title. Now, this season, totally different. Last year, Jackson State came into the game. Top-notch quarterback is playing now for the Falcons. And Southern kind of pulled the surprise and beat them. This year, whole new, whole new series, whole new game, same intense rivalry. How do you see this one playing out? Since it's going to be in Baton Rouge, it's worse now because you have the number one team in the East against the number one team in the West. And on paper, we're not supposed to beat Jackson State. Jackson State has the number one corner in FCS, Quay Cox. Uh, they have uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the FCS, uh, big offensive line, uh, the dark side defense that they call them. We're not supposed to be on the field with Jackson State. But it's something about this rivalry. It doesn't matter who's supposed to be on the field with who. You know it's going to come down to the intangibles. And I think what we have to do uh, come Saturday is play. Offensive line play has to get better uh, and establishing the run. But defensively, not giving up the big play. Not giving up the big play. We have a young secondary, a uh, very young secondary. But I think with Dre Joseph and that offense, uh, with, you know, Dawson, some of those guys on the outside, uh, we're going to be able to, to we're going to be able to make some plays on the offensive end. Our biggest thing is not giving up the big play on defense. If, they, if they're going to score, make them earn it. Make them drive, but don't give up the big play. Now, we were talking off air about – you were going to be inducted into Southern University's Hall of Fame. Um, you were talking about how it was, a, first of all, it was a big surprise because there's players from the 1970s and the 1980s that still are waiting to get into the Hall of Fame. Right. And this was your first ballot and you got in. What was that whole process like? I mean, and more importantly, what all is it going to entail in a couple of weeks when you have to go down to Baton Rouge and you have to be inducted into the Southern Hall of Fame? <laughs> Man, um, you know what? I, I, mean, I, I don't know. Um, I'm happy, man. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for Southern University. Uh, they gave me an opportunity uh, to come down and get an education and uh, play uh, in some, 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 some great environments. I uh, play for a great coach, and Pete Richardson. You know, to play in the Bayou Classic, to play in the Southern Jackson State game. You know, the, the, the win SWAT titles, you know, black college football national championships. I, I'm, I'm happy. Um, it's, it's, it's odd to know that people look at you that highly because I'm just a regular Joe in my eyes. But for when you go back to Baton Rouge and people want to talk to you and they pull you to the side and want to know what you're doing now, that's, that's humbling. Um, to me, that's uh, that's something I thank God for. Uh, I thank God for. I thank God that to have the career that I had at Southern University, for someone to look at me and says that this cat is one of the best to come through here to ever to do it. 
I, that means a lot to me. You know, to go in, anytime you go somewhere, you set records. And people remember you long after you're gone. You know, I have, you know, players on this team, you know, to hit me up on Twitter. And, you know, and we, we kind of talk about what it means, uh, you know, that dog day defense, that Louisiana gold rush, as we call it. I mean, it's humbling. And this, this speech, hey, I'm trying to get through it the, the best way I can. Um I'm I'm just thankful, man. I'm thankful. Now, you and your wife have a daughter, and I know she's still very young, but the question now, feel free to answer this. You don't have to if you don't want to. How old will she be when you expose her to the Southern Jackson State rivalry? Oh, man. Um, she'll be pretty young. She'll be pretty young. I'm, I'm thinking uh, she won't go this year. Uh, she'll stay with the grandparents, but... Um, <laughs> I'm I'm thinking young. I'm 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 thinking about the time she's three or four, she'll know about the Southern Jackson State rivalry. And you know, me and my wife we have our own rivalry because my wife is a graduate of Alabama A and M. So we go back and forth of, you know, which school she's going to go to. So, you know, the Southern and Alabama A and M game is uh, real big in my house. So we'll see how that goes. Now the clock's ticking. At the time of this, it's Tuesday. Friday will be here before we know it. Saturday. Now the kickoff is at what time? Five o'clock kickoff. Five o'clock kickoff. Is it going to be televised where people can turn it on? Uh, ESPNU. Uh, it's going to be ESPNU. Yeah. Now, uh, for a lot of people that are going to ask, uh, you know, ESPNU, it it's not hard to get, and if you can't get it, definitely go someplace and watch it. Um, the best way to kind of put it, as you said, Brandon, it's really it, it, it's football where you take away polls and playoffs and. And this and that, it's really football at its most raw emotion. It's, I don't like you, you don't like me, and if I beat you, I don't get to brag about this for 365 days. I get to brag about this the day I die. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, I look at it, that 06 game will forever stick out to me because I thought we had Jackson State. Uh, if you, you guys don't know, I, I can walk you guys through memory, memory lane. When we jumped out to a 20-7 uh, to, 20 to 7, um well, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, twenty to seven lead over Jackson State. They trimmed it down. Uh, we went in uh, for two, scored a touchdown, went up twenty-eight to uh, fourteen. And then the fourth quarter, the momentum flipped. Uh, we were up twenty-eight twenty-one. Um, they go in at, on the drive with about four minutes left to to, to tie the game up. I catch an interception about seven yards deep in the end zone. I bring it all the way out to around the 36-yard line. As soon as we head to the sidelines, I think we got them. You know, I'm, I, you know, I see the TV camera. I'm, I'm like, yeah, we, we got them. You know, it's over. Very next play, we fumbled the ball. Uh, Brooks, uh, Daniel Brooks, um, made made a, a great tackle and on uh, on Chris Russell. He fumbled the ball. They got the ball back down there. and They drove it in, and you know, 28-28. We go to the first overtime, we both turn the ball over. Uh, go to the second overtime, we miss a field goal, um, and uh, we block a field goal. And then the, the third overtime, we turn the ball over, and they kick the field goal, and they win that game 31-28. That game, I, I don't think I've ever gotten over that game uh, just because of what it, it meant. And you know Jermaine. Jermaine, would, Jermaine made sure he always brought that game up to me because of how how bad that game hurt, and I, I and and this is you know years later, that game still hurts because you know you win that ball game, you come to Birmingham, and we play A and M again, and we we beat A and M because we finished that 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 season, one of the hottest teams in the country, you know we had beat the number one team a few weeks later in McNeese State. Um, you know, beating Grambling, and you know, we finished the, the, the year nine and three, but it's an empty nine and three because that game got away from you, and that that's the one that hurts. So, the the players that you don't want to feel that hurt, and those guys are in a position to do something about it, and we got to go out and take care of it come Saturday. Before we wrap up, if there was one word, phrase term you could use to describe this rivalry to anybody if they'd never heard of Jackson State and Southern, what would it be? P.
passion. That's it. Passion. Both fan bases are passionate about their school. The students are passionate about their school. The players are passionate about their school. The bands are passionate about that uniform. The 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 cheerleaders, the mascots, everyone's passionate. And, you know, we get to Baton Rouge, you know, come, you know, Friday, you know, Saturday, it's going to be on and popping. Well, it's going to be the 58th time that Jackson State and Southern have met. It's going to be in Baton Rouge, 5 o'clock, on ESPNU. And definitely going to be probably one of the most intense rivalries that you have. If you haven't seen it, you need to sit down hey, and look, watch it. You, YouTube the clips. <laughs> YouTube the clips. And that's how intense it is. And, and people, I know you may think, oh, well, we're just trying to hype this up. We're not. History doesn't lie. And if, like Brandon said, if you think that we're not being honest, go to YouTube. Yeah. It's that's all you got to say. Brandon, once again, congratulations, man, on getting into the Southern Hall of Fame. We'll have pictures. We're going to have commentary. Uh, Matt will be with us next time. We will be talking to Brandon and getting all the lowdown and everything that happened. But make sure that you do tune in because this is probably one game you may not want to miss. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for us. Once again, go to the locker room. Go to ESPNU. Go anywhere. Don't just watch Southern and Jackson State. Learn all about it. Figure out the history. And just see why Brandon says it's all about passion.